Welcome back to the final part of our SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial series. So this is the final part and the final section and the video, the tutorial series is going to end with this particular video. So if you have been following the entire series, again, very good. And if you have not, then please do. Please do follow, like, subscribe and share the video in order to keep me motivated and thank you to all my subscribers who supported me and motivated me to make this tutorial series happen thank you all so in this last video of ours i'm going to show you the uh final render settings of V-Ray in SketchUp uh, render elements in brief and also the post-processing bit of V-Ray and post-processing with Photoshop so yeah follow along the video uh, to learn how to create this kind of photorealistic renders so I currently have the interactive render on uh, just to show you that let me just move that around yeah so that's the interactive render on so I'm just gonna stop the interactive render for now yeah so pause that and again as usual I've forgotten to switch on my keylogger yeah so now that I have my keylogger on you can see what I'm clicking on and yeah, the left hand side here yeah sure so for all those who have not been able to get their model right yet you can download the model from the description below and give out give the render settings a try or you can tweak the settings or any values in the render change the textures do what you like and create something new and you can even send me the pictures or your f of your final renders directly to me I am available to take and see all your renders and I'll be really happy if some of you can do the work take the pain and create your own version of realistic renders so yeah so let's get into the V-Ray render settings so first in order to set everything up in view click on the asset editor and right away I have these settings you'll actually be here in, in the beginning so what you do is you once you open up the asset editor you go to settings let's let's just close that yeah so you've got three options over here one is the CPU render engine so it'll render with the help of the CPU this is the CUDA. I'm sure most of you are aware of CUDA. CUDA basically uses the uh, graphics card and the CPU and RTX for those who have RTX graphics card and I do not have RTX graphics card. So I'm going to use CUDA for mine. And I'm going to switch off the interactive render because we're going to end up with the final render now. Then you can select what quality you'd like. So I'm just going to go with high plus. In V-Ray 5.1, they've given us an option of high plus. So set that there. Update if FX in the end. So update all the effects that you set up in the end. I'll show you what are the effects. So you switch on V-Ray Denoiser. De Leave that on V-Ray Denoiser for now. Standard exposure. Leave that on. Leave that to the default values there. You can switch on depth of field, but I'll cover that in another tutorial video. What's depth of field and how you can use it. So let's just let's just that just turn that off for the moment. Under effects, give a slight vignetting to your video. That, that vignetting is basically that curve. I mean black blacked out edges that you generally get while filming or taking a picture. So it just gives that ever slight realism to your pictures. So I set that up to 0 0.1. Yeah, and let that be zero. Default. Set this image height. Oh, change that to portrait and hope I hope you already have that in portrait and set that to 3000 or 4000 whatever you like so I rendered this image at 4k so I had it on 3000 and you can save your image path if you like but I'm not going to do that I'm going to save my own we do not need animation for now environment has already been set we already set the environment to environmental sky and you, you are not working with the environment so you do not have to worry about the environment for now and you don't need anything else over here really and then if you look on the right hand side you've got render parameters set the quality to 0.005 or you can set it to 0.001 for reducing a little more 
noise. I mean, I don't think it makes that much of a difference because you're already using a denoiser and a very low noise limit value over here. So yeah, so let that just be to the default values. Bucket size, let that be again a default for all you newbies this is. So let that, let that default value be there. Max subdivision again, let that be a 200. Use, you can use an anti-aliasing fil filter for now, but if you're a professional, some don't even use anti-aliasing filter. I've seen many V-Ray videos, V-Ray company folders or files where they do not use anti-aliasing filter, they just directly do it on post-production actually. So yes, you can use that for newbies. Use the anti-aliasing filter and set it to land cost to the default settings. Again, I'll cover that in another video of, the, of all the, the importance of all the others and why it's been set to default values. I'll cover that in another video. Then switch that on and then open up the color mapping. Let that be highlight, highlight burn. You don't have to switch on that subpixel sub clamping. Optimizations, adapted lights, again, default values. I've just kept that on default values. Switches, displacement, lights. Let the hidden lights be unchecked for now. Now, if you are using CUDA, you'll have something called the GPU memory management. So yeah, so if you have GPU man memory management, make sure your textures are full size textures and you're using 8 bit per channel. For the moment, let that be. After that, go down to the global illumination switch on the advanced setting from here let that be brute force and light cache over there let that default values be as it is you're, you're using a CUDA engine anyway so it'll just by default take up the brute force uh, render engine as your primary race engine sorry let all the default values be GI caustics you can use reflective or refractive caustics I wouldn't recommend for this particular render because caustics is mainly for water or glass so you don't have to worry about caustics for now and you'll have whatever the advanced camera parameters are again if you're a newbie you're new to SketchUp at the moment just don't touch them just let that value be for now I'll explain that in later tutorials or so you have hundreds of tutorials on these settings on YouTube itself so but yeah you should be you should be good to go with your default values itself and they're good enough actually you can use bokeh bokeh is again that blackish thing uh, and i'm not going to use bokeh for now so volumetric environment is not required for now i'm going to the last thing that i'm going to use is the denoiser switch that on and set that to VA denoiser and set that to mild for now not default mild do not go up to custom you can give it a try with other things as well you can go ahead and make it default strong you can create your own custom denoisers values and stuff like that but i'm just going to go with mild for this one and after that i actually didn't touch all these so yeah so let that be as it is for now and let's just try rendering this and see what it looks like eventually so go back to your camera view and hit on render so if you click on render it'll immediately start rendering so i'm just using cuda for now so you'll have if you go to your stats see it starts rendering and it looks pretty good already so it's gonna take some time but I'm just gonna stop the rendering for now because we have some more parts to cover in this which is the render elements part so let's just stop the rendering for now yeah abort rendering cross that so after the settings you've got render elements so what is render elements? Render elements are used generally for post-production and V-Ray intelligently has introduced a new render element that's the light mix which actually is quite fascinating and so yeah just right click on it and select light mix from the drop down and put that group by two individual lights and I'll show you what's light mix at the end. Uh, after I render up a video you can work on that I'll just show you what's light mix but it's probably one of the most interesting feature actually to be honest I had lighting you can use specular I'll cover the render elements in another tutorial again not for this particular tutorial but you can have light mix lighting and specular for now and for those of you who already know how to use it very good I mean there are again tons of videos on this on YouTube itself you can find the importance of render elements and how it can actually add to your realism further so the more you go in depth with V-Ray, you'll find out that render elements actually do matter for post-processing and that's, that's the main thing that actually gives you the final realism. 
so yes for now i'm just going to be concentrating on light mix and let's see what the final render looks like so i'm for for a quick render let me just set that down to 500 for now because i just want to show you the render elements uh, how it functions in post processing and stuff like this so just after you've done that so you, yours can be 3k or whatever if you're happy with so i'm just going to set it to 500 for now and render it yeah so just hit on render which can to render faster than your 3k of course so i'm just going to wait for it to render out completely and get back to you so finally the render is done and now i'm going to post process this same render with the help of the V-Ray layers that you see over here. So you sh if, if you cannot find it, you probably have this thing covering your uh, layer thing. So just hold that and pull that down here somewhere. Yeah. And in the layers tab, you'll see there's a plus button. So the importance of post processing is that your render might not be perfect. So you have to post process using Photoshop or V-Ray has introduced this new feature so use that so there's a lot of options here where you can clamp lights change the value of your uh, light power the color of your lights you can do a lot of things so I'm just going to show you the post -process processing bit with V-Ray itself so if you click on the layers create layer button you click on that and if you this is a lookup table over here and select curves first so with what you can do with the curves is that yeah so make sure the eye is switched on this Make sure it's switched on click on that and you can bend the values and see you're, you're already starting to see some difference there so set that up somewhere there again there's another dot on top there use that to increase the light there yeah so that's done but then again the render is still quite dark isn't it so how do you fix that so you go up to the layer tabs again select exposure and you can increase the exposure but the moment you increase exposure you'll notice that it starts to burn so you have another option down here which is called highlight burn but you do not know how much to set it to so how do you know what's the right value for the highlight burn burn so in order to have a look at it or get the right value there's no perfect value but in order to set it to the right tone you can go up here to view color clamping and force color clamping switch that on so the moment you switch that on you'll see that it's filled with this random i don't know cyan or blue colors that shows that it's burning out it's fading out the render there so now if you use this slider highlight burn slider and pull that backwards you'll see that thing disappearing actually so I'm quite happy with that yeah I'll just leave it there for the moment so I'm quite happy with that actually and again you can play with the uh, exposure there use but you cannot just set it there actually to be honest you have to find the right adjustment for that so the moment you have that again you can use the after that you can use the contrast to set the tone you like your the black is the contrast you'd like for your render you can set that you can set it you can do that you can fade it out so yeah i'll just leave it somewhere there for the moment and again to switch that off go to view color clamping force color clamping so now that's done yeah that looks pretty good actually so if you if i just switch that off look at the difference see that's the difference there you can already see the differences and there you go that's the difference there so the next thing that we all have been waiting for is light mix so what is light mix so this is light mix not sunlight switch off this oh there you go yeah light mix is actually quite interesting to be honest so look at that i can actually individually switch off lights and yet not destroy the render and i do not have to re-render the things again so it has already calculated everything for you all ready to go uh, sorry about that that was just fine so you can switch that off, you can change its values. So I can change that value to 1.2 and see the light value, the light intensity increases. I can change the color again to much yellowish tone. Yeah, if you want that, you can keep that. Yeah, that's a nice one. I can reduce that to 0 0.5. Yeah, it gets lighter, isn't it? So you have the option to manipulate lights in V-Ray post-processing itself. 
so despite your render being or the despite of your render being not that correct you can actually correct it in the post processing bit I'm, I mean I'm specifically picking out lighting over here so you can actually correct it in the post processing bit itself so this one the sun no, not the sunlight the rectangle light one let's just turn that down to 0 0.9 0 0.8 yeah that looks pretty good and I'm gonna set that to 0 0.9 and again just just for that was just for your reference and set the color somewhere there yeah i'm quite happy with that that's the environment light these are the spotlights as you can see the spotlights look fine to me so i'll just leave that there so that is light mix so that's the benefit of using light mix and now you have the denoiser you can play with mild you can go with strong denoisers in order to check out denoisers you'll have to zoom in probably but it does have effect on many renders and makes it look softer so I'm just gonna go with mild for now that's the one I like and then the lens effect what's the lens effect uh, so if you enable your bloom and glare actually I do not have any direct light over here to show to you but you get those starry glares around your lights you know and you know what I mean already so yeah so that's the useful bit of uh, lens effect so lens effects come in handy you don't have to actually go into photoshop and place your own lens effects there anymore you can do it in sketchup i mean sketchup and v-ray itself you can do that over here itself so that's one effective way so the next one i'm going to show you is the hue and saturation what's hue and so this is hue and saturation ah uh, so i'm just going to set that to zero saturation is of course the color saturation the way you like it you can set it you can bring it down you can tone it up a little bit so that's just here if you yeah hue and saturation sorry that's the lightness i leave that to zero for now the next up is white balance white balance is basically the temperature that you want to set your final render to you could have your warm you can have a warm kitchen room or you can have a cold kitchen room if it's winter or summer that's up to you so i'm just going to set it right there you can add a little bit of pinkish tint that I was talking about but same as the final picture yeah, you can add it to the year itself so that's it for that and you can add a filmic tone mat, but I'm not gonna go with the filmic tone mat for now because again I'll cover all this in a different for this tutorial I just want to show you the basic post-processing using V-Ray so I'm just gonna switch switch that off or you can even delete that by right clicking you can reset values you can save them or you can load your own values and you can delete them eventually I'm gonna leave that I'm quite happy with that for now and to save it all you have to do is click on save save it anywhere you like I'm gonna save it on my desktop for now save it there so now we are good to go and so let's let's just find my save render where is it ah there you go number one so let's open up Photoshop now then Basically, you do not need Photoshop. I'm just going to show you a few tweaks in Photoshop that I do using the camera raw filter in order to you know, make it look a little more realistic or a little better than what it looks. So, yeah, because in Photoshop, you've got a lot of options actually, to be honest. So, yeah, make a copy of that, drag that and drag it there. So, use filter. Ah, oh, there. You have to select that. Filter, camera raw filter. And you can tweak the values there. Exposure contrast the way you like it highlights bring that down shadows you can take that up whiteness take that up black and I'm quite happy there actually clarity that adds clarity to your picture it just makes it a little sharper the edges and everything vibrance is again the color tone and saturation of course the one that I showed you, you can just set it over there somewhere or you can bring it up or leave that to zero itself and then you got the same chart that we did the curves and everything in photoshop i'm just going to go to sharpen and sharpen the image a little bit and use the luminance is actually another beautiful feature in photoshop you can turn up the detail if you like contrast a bit and then the color part is what actually interested me actually, to be honest if you hold that if you increase the color i don't know if you can see it you can actually see it giving it that natural look the moment you slide it there so i'm just going to leave it for now over there 
yeah it's good to go you can all you can also sorry uh, in the next tab you can adjust your color saturation separately so that's another good feature you've got you can adjust your greens you can adjust the luminance of uh, the green color how dark or light you want to be you can adjust your hue of the green the way you want your plant to look like you can add the, yeah, there, there's, there are a lot of options to go by so I'm just gonna leave that to you give it a try and yeah possibly send me your final renders I'd like to have a look at them and let me know in the comments if you have any further questions regarding post-processing so yes I'm gonna end the video over here it's been a long one and so yeah if you enjoyed the video then please do subscribe to my channel and thank you again for all your support and love. I'll see you in another tutorial series. Thank you.